All right, we're going to start truth conditional semantics using model theory. So this is the model that's used in uh, Kierka and McConnell Ganet, that textbook, compared to functional truth conditional semantics, which will be used by Hyman Kratzer. So we'll cover both. We'll start with the model theory stuff to get used to the mathematical preliminaries, and then start working with uh, lambda abstraction a little bit later when we run into our roadblocks with model theory. So. When we think about linguistic meaning, there's a linguistic expression, and that expression refers to something in the real world, and we call that world a model. So we can call our model something like capital M, and then everything that we talk about the meaning with respect to, we talk about it with respect to the model or the world. So what we'll do is we'll map different types of categories, different types of units in syntax and semantics, to different types of mathematical objects. So proper names are going to be uh, objects in set theory. So we can think of these as eventually being things like elements. So if we have someone like Mark, we might say that this is the object M and it can be in a set or not. Verbs are going to be our relations. So if we have intransitive verbs, which we'd call VI, these would be sets with individual elements. And if we have, say, transitive verbs, which we'd say VT, we'd be looking at pairs of things X and Y, such that X does something to Y. And this is just the fact that here with X, we just have a subject, and with X and Y, we would have a subject and we'd have a direct object. Now, sentences are going to be truth values, because our sentences are either going to be true or false. So if we have a sentence in our model, it could be true, or a sentence in our model could be false. So one or zero, and this is where we can apply conjunctions and negation and follow those truth tables to figure out what the truth conditions of sentences are. Now, truth conditional semantics assumes basic syntactic constituency, so we say that the meaning of a sentence is built up from the meaning of its parts. So every single constituent gets a meaning and all of those meanings build up to our final meaning. So we start with very, very basic syntax because if we try to do anything more at this point, we're gonna start running into problems. So this is the fragment F1 in the Kierke textbook and we'll be going with this until we get to the Hyman Kratzer stuff and introduce more stuff there. So. Uh, here we have a sentence branches into a noun and a verb phrase. Uh, we could put an NP and N here, but we're only going to deal with proper names. So we're not going to do the NP thing. A sentence can take a negation and a sentence. A sentence can take two sentences with a conjunction between them. And then a verb phrase can be an intransitive verb. Or a verb phrase can take a transitive verb and a noun. So we only have five rules here. And this is how our terminal nodes will spell out. A negation will be, it is not the case that conjunctions can be and, or, but, any conjunction in regular syntax. Nouns will be proper names. So we cannot do things like cat, dog, all those things yet. Uh, our VIs will be intransitive verbs. So these are examples like eat, sleeps, jumps. Uh, eats could be transitive too, depending on the meaning, but we won't have that eats in our set yet. And then transitive verbs, VT, these can be things like likes, marries, tells, and so on. So to show you how the syntax is done, let's take an example sentence. Mary likes Fred, but it's not the case that Mary eats. So what we have here is we have two sentences joined by a conjunction. So we have a sentence here, this breaks into our conjunction, and we're gonna have two sentences branching off. For the left sentence, Mary likes Fred, we're going to have a noun and a verb phrase. So the verb phrase would be likes Fred, that has a transitive verb, and that has Fred as a noun after it. For the right sentence, it's not the case that Mary eats. This is a negation attaching to another sentence, uh, Mary eats, and this is composed of a noun and a verb phrase, and that verb phrase just has an intransitive verb, eats. So I'll put these words in here, so that way we can see exactly where everything lines up. 
Uh, I'm going to just put in a big capital not for it is not the case that. And then we get Mary eats on our right side. So this is a simple syntactic structure, definitely not X-bar theory, but we can start using this to do compositional semantics and get the hang of it in model theory. So here's how our rules are going to work. We're going to start with lexical entries. So basically, these are all of our terminal nodes on a tree, and these have meaning, and we'll take those terminal nodes and use rules to get the meaning of a sentence eventually. So whenever we have a proper name like Jake or Charlie, um, we're going to just assign it a capital letter, and I like to put a little prime symbol on it so that way I know it's a person, and not just uh, an arbitrary variable I'm using. You'll see that we say the truth conditions with these double brackets, and this capital M up here says relative to the model. So if we say Jake in M, uh, so J prime is the meaning of Jake in our model M. If we have an intransitive verb like jumps, what we're going to say is that this is going to be the set of X such that X jumps. So this is our relation, and these are basically the set of all the things that jump. So that's how intransitive verbs are going to be done. Now, is boring is a verb phrase with an adjective, but it behaves just like an intransitive verb. So we're going to keep the same thing, the set of X, such that X is boring. That would be our meaning for is boring. Now, in the case of likes, this is a transitive verb. So here we'd have a set with our pair X, Y, such that X likes Y. So this has a subject X, a direct object Y, and the positions are very clearly laid out in their meanings. So, so far we have basically covered the ends in the first two rules. We've covered the VIs in our next two rules. We have one rule for our VT. This next rule is going to be for the negation. It is not the case that. Now this is a truth value changer. So we're going to write this in matrix notation. We're going to say, if we have a true sentence, it's going to become false. If we have a false sentence, it's going to become true. So you can think of this as the assignments are changing in terms of truth values. So this is our example for negation. And for something like or, it's going to be very similar. But remember, with or, we're taking pairs. So we can either have a true sentence and a true sentence coming together, a true and a false, a false and a true, or a false and a false. And we know based on our truth table for or that it's true if at least one of those disjuncts is true and it's false in the other case. So this is our example for conj, specifically the word or. So we're going to use these rules in a final example later, but this is just how we assign our lexical entries based on the type of word that we're looking at. So now when we have our base lexical entries, we're going to have to figure out, well, if we have, just for example, let's make this very simple. We have S, V, P, and V, I. Imagine we have the word jumps, and imagine we have the word Fred. At this point, we only know the lexical entries for these two points. So how are we going to get these lexical entries for V, I, for V, P, for N, and S? So that's what we're going to discuss next. So the first rule is a general rule. And this is a rule for any node that just has one branch coming out of it. So if we have a single branch, so in the case of n going to Fred, to get the meaning of n, we're just going to assign it the same meaning as Fred. So how we write this is if A goes to A, or the meaning of A going to A is just the same thing as little a itself. So in other words, big A gets the same meaning as little a if little a is coming out of big A. So this means that if we know, for example, in this case, the meaning of N with Fred coming out of it, is just going to be the same thing as the meaning of Fred itself. And this will work for anything that has just one branch. So you can think of it like a pass up rule. Now in terms of a verb phrase with a transitive verb and a noun, what this is going to look like 
is this is going to be a set. So this is going to be a set of X such that this end right here is plugged into the direct object. So it's still going to be pairs, but instead of taking a look at any case where, you know, we don't know what the direct object is, we're now going to put that into our formula for Y, and this is just going to be X, and our object is an element of our transitive verb. So this might look a little bit confusing, but we can simplify this a little bit. So what this is going to look like is something like the set of X, such that X VTs, whatever the transitive verb is, and then our noun. So basically, instead of this being Y before, Y in these areas, we're just replacing it with the noun in our direct object position. So as an example, let's say that we have a VP here. Uh, this is the word likes, and this is the word Fred. So likes would be a set of pairs XY such that X likes Y. But now when we have our direct object in here, what we can then do is we can plug that direct object in. So this is now going to be the set of X such that X likes Fred. So we can see the reduction here from having two things that we don't know about. We don't know what the direct object is at that point to then knowing what the direct object is and only missing our subject. Now, when we take the truth value of our sentence going to a noun to a verb phrase, this is gonna be a little bit different because we remember that sentences are truth values. So we say this is true if and only if our, tr our meaning of the noun is an element of the meaning of the verb phrase. So basically, if we think about the example we had before, I'm just gonna get rid of this one here. We have likes Fred, that's our verb phrase. So let's expand on this a little bit. And let's say this is a sentence and this is Mary. If Mary likes Fred is true, what this means is that, so this is gonna be one if and only if, Mary is an element of the set of X, such that X likes Fred. So if Mary is in the set of X such that X likes Fred, then the sentence is true. If she's not in that set, then the sentence is false. So these are our three rules for building up up to the S layer, but we have two more rules for our operations. So this is when we have a sentence being negated. So what we do in this case is we simply apply the negation function to our lower sentence. So we can say this is the negation applied to S1. So this means that if S1 is true and blah, 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 once we apply the negation, then, then, then that means that S is false when blah, blah, blah. And if we have S going to S1 and S2 with the conjunction, what we do is we apply our conjunction function to our two lower sentences, S1 and S2, in that order. So we remember that, okay, maybe we're going to do the one for and now. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. These are all our possible truth conditions. We get something like 1, 0, 0, 0. Basically, what we do is we take this, we apply it to our two sentences, and that's going to change the truth value. So let's see this in a full example. It is not the case that Mark likes Sue. And I'm gonna start on the page. If we have to move things down, we have to move things down. I'm basically going to go piece by piece. So the meaning of Sue is just going to be something like S prime. And this is going to be part of a noun we think about our trees, and this is just gonna take the same meaning as it's one daughter because we just have one thing coming out of it. So this will also be S prime. Now, this is going to connect to a verb phrase. And this verb phrase is going to give us a transitive verb, and it's also go going to give us the verb likes itself. 
So the meaning of likes, and I'll put it below, this is going to be again the set of pairs x, y such that x likes y. Okay, and this meaning is going to get passed up. So if I was smart about this, I would be doing these in different colors. So that way we can see where the meaning differs from the syntax. So I'm going to use the magic of technology in order to change these colors right now so that way we can work with both. So what that means is that this meaning is going to get pushed up here under the VT as well because it just has one daughter. We'll extend this down a little bit. And now for the meaning of our verb phrase, what's going to happen is that we're going to plug in S prime for our direct object. So now we're just going to take a look at things we don't know about, which is our subjects X. So this is going to be the set of X such that X likes S prime. So what we've done here, I'll do it in this color. We've essentially taken our S prime and we plugged it into our Y value there. Okay, so then we have Mark likes Sue. So this is going to build into a sentence that has meaning. And this is going to take a subject that has meaning, which also has a daughter, and this is going to be Mark. So we're going to say that the meaning of Mark is just going to be M prime. And because the noun above it just has one daughter, this will also be M prime. Remember, sentences are truth values, so applying the rule before, this is going to be true if and only if M prime is an element of the set of X such that X likes S prime. So Mark likes Sue is true if Mark is an element of the set of X such that X likes Sue. But this isn't where we're going. We're going to it is not the case that Mark likes Sue. So this is going to build up into a higher sentence, M. Uh, let's put that there, which is going to break down into the negation. And we know that our negation is going to break down into a phrase, uh, which is going to be, it is not the case that. Some people do a single line, I do a triangle because we have multiple words here. So what is the meaning of it is not the case that? Well, again, this is a function that takes true sentences to false and false sentences to true because this, the negation has only one daughter here. The negation node above it is going to get the same meaning as the negation node below it. And now for our sentence above, what we're doing is we're applying the negation function to the sentence true if Mark is in the set of X such that X likes S. So basically this one right here is going to change to a zero. So it's zero, it's false, if and only if. Mark is an element of the set of X, such that X likes S prime. Now, it's typical convention to not end in a false, but to end in a true. So what we can do is we can change this a little bit. We can say, okay, if it's false, if Mark is in the set, it's going to be true if Mark is not in the set. So we can say it's true if Mark prime is not in the set of X, such that X likes Sue prime. Okay, so here's an example of how truth conditional semantics works in model theory with our fragment F1. In order to keep going, we need to introduce predicate logic. So that's what we'll do in the next video. And then we can start talking about quantifiers and talking about common nouns like dogs and cats. We can even throw in adjectives if we want to. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. And like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff helps out. So hope to see you in the next one.